that he was maybe just rushing things a little with his this being his debut here at the World Tempin Masters, but I, I just think that's the way he plays. I think if he can get get his head around the, the whole scenario of actually being here under the TV, uh, really hot lights as we know, as you say, it's his first time here. The big crowd very close to him. Um, he's looking quite good, so um, hopefully he's relaxed and uh, well, he's on, on par for 200 plus. Belmonte then, so good. He's got two nicknames. Belmo, the one that he goes by normally, but at this tournament is known as Hollywood and he always will be as long as he keeps providing us with the drama. Good work. Good work. And that's the benefit of the amount of action that he gets onto those pins with the revs. He was, he was a touch high there, wasn't he, Cass? But it still did the job for him. Absolutely, yes. Um, so much movement in the pocket there. The ball's uh, really hooking up in the uh, drive back end of the lane. Obviously, we, uh, as we've explained before, there's oil on the first uh, 40 feet of the lane. The lane is then bone dry, and of course, the reaction of the ball coming off that oil onto the dry part of the lane sets up the reaction and allows the hook. Oh. The messenger gets uh, the job done for James Tidd. First touch of luck that we've seen from him. Well, he's not going to mind a little bit of luck. It's keeping him in the match, and it's keeping them all level, so he's going to be very happy at this stage, and I would think that he thinks to himself, if I can go in after one game in touch with Jason Belmonte, he's in with a chance. At the moment, he's exactly there. He will take that start, James Tidd. Belmo straight back into it. And this is looking very good now. The strike starting to flow for Jason Belmonte. Yeah, pacing 268 and slightly fortunate with that last shot. Although it was a strike, he realised it was uh, what they call slightly half pocket. Just drifts a little wide, just makes the head pin. And, well, yeah, I'll, I'll accept that one. Four strikes in a row. And in some parts of the world, they would call that a hand bone. That's right, the new word for four strikes. And this is what Tid's working on, a hand bone. Gets it. Now, that was a much better strike, Cass. He really hit the pocket flush there. He was a little light last time out, but that time, no mistakes at all. Does that make two hand bones? And I think we should leave it there with, uh, <laughs> with that nickname. Four strikes in a row apiece. Still dead level. Great-looking shot from the young man from uh, Norwich. And more revs on that as well, 472 right up there. Yeah, the uh, young left-hander is looking rather good. Belmonte then, making four strikes. No, left to split. Big frame, high through the head pin, and has left the 4-6 split, which is unusual. He's got so much reaction on that ball that he should have actually picked... Uh, one of these off, and now he's going to shake his head. This is more than likely going to be an open frame, and it's the foundation frame, frame nine. And there it is. Well, he called it right, Cass. Where's Jason off to? Is he going to get another ball, or is he taking time out? Well, he's not going to run away from his title defence. He's uh, uh, just I know what popped he's down for a chat with the fans. I think he's asked the young lady down there with her, her poster just to keep slightly still while he's on, on the approach. But that's no problem. What a lovely way to do it, though. Unfortunately, an open frame. So he's gone through the 200 barrier, but uh, this is James Tidd's chance. Working four strikes in a row. Foundation frame, frame nine. This for the lead. And the birthday boy nails it. He's looking really, really good. And doesn't he know it? Five strikes in a row. Cass, this, this boy's got a chance. Well, we're now nearly halfway because we're coming to the end of the first game. And as I said, if, he's, if he can get to the halfway stage, be in touch. It looks as though he's going to be in the lead. The pressure is all on the reigning champion, Jason Belmonte. And look what a difference that open frame makes. 5-6-8 versus 5-34. That's their maximum scores that they can get from here if they continue to strike out. Which uh, Jason Belmonte is more than happy to do. Yes, give yourself a pat on the back. He's had a bit to deal with over the last couple of frames. I thought he dealt with that situation fantastically well. Just jogged down there and asked one of the fans just to keep a little more uh, still with the cards that uh, get waved about to signify strikes. Strike for the first shot in the tenth frame gives him the opportunity to shoot two more strikes and a game of 2.30, which 
won't be disastrous. He'll be in touch. No. Very unlucky indeed. Brings the temp in in the corner. Just hit that pocket so hard. These brand new pins don't fly around quite as much as uh, pins that have been uh, had a few games on them. Well, one thing we know about this man is that he can deal with the pressure. We've seen him on countless occasions at this tournament come through very difficult situations. Well, he's done it. But that is not the score that he was looking for. 2.24 then to Belmonte. It's about par for someone of his quality. Yes, and as you said, Simon, that uh, open frame in frame number nine did so much damage. And uh, Jason actually knows that. As your confirmation, Belmonte's in trouble if his opponent, James Tidd, can put the pressure on still further. No, that was the first sign that we've seen that uh, James Tidd was aware of his situation up there on the stage. I'm sure that a thought went into his head there, Cass, this is my chance. Well, this would have been the ball, wouldn't it? But look, see how wide it's sailed out. He's got the reaction, he's come roaring back. Just in the wrong place, didn't make the pocket. He's left himself the three and the six pin, which should be a straightforward spare for the left-hander. He's sent the big hook down, covered it nicely. He's going to earn himself a bonus ball and will take him to 240 plus. So he will be in the lead after game one. He is having a ball out there. What a birthday party for James Tidd. Now, nice tidy up from him. He's already got a two-pin lead on Belmonte. Yes, plus the spare, plus this ball, which is nine. Well, not quite what he was going for. But James Tidd of England will definitely go in at the halfway stage with a lead in this match. Confirmation of the scores then that they could get this one is very close indeed. 5.45 is what Tidd could get to. So at the end of the opening game, James Tidd of England acquitting himself very well. 2.45 for him. Plays 224 for Jason Belmonte, the defending champion. Welcome back to the PartyCasino.com World 10 Pin Masters. It's a fascinating tussle between the defending champion and the man making his Masters debut, Belmonte and Tid, matching each other ball for ball. For Belmonte, the form guide is there for all to see. The defending champion, with an average of over 235, produced a perfect game on the way to the Masters title. He's always looked at home on this lane, but maybe this year things aren't quite as he remembered them. Something has unsettled the Australian out there in Game 1. Will he redeem himself in the second? For the man making his Masters debut, the stats aren't quite so impressive, but his form is still pretty good. A qualifier for this tournament, his average of 225 suggests he may provide his opponent with more questions than answers. Well, in Game 1, Tid certainly kept pace with the mighty Belmonte. He has grounds for optimism in Game 2. Let's rejoin our commentary team of Cass Edwards and Simon Golding. 21 pins adrift. And if James bowls another game, like his first one, oh, I can see him going through. Beautiful start. The second game then underway for James Tidd with a strike. Now we know that Jason Belmonte is going to respond. And I think it's going to be more about how James Tidd copes with that when it happens than how well Jason Belmonte actually plays. I think that's where this game lies, Cass. Well, I think James has got the lane beaten, which is the, the major thing. Ooh. Another stumble. Well, it's legal. Yeah, Jason's OK. He didn't go over the line. He didn't deliver the ball, so he's uh, he started and uh, gather his thoughts. And these are heavy objects, Cass. They're, they take quite a bit to stop. <laughs> the, uh, the bowling ball, of course. 16-pound bowling ball. Absolutely, yeah. And Jason's been averaging over 600 revs for every ball that he's bowled for his strike line. Wow. Well, he's there. He's made another one. Not the most convincing strike that he'll throw, but he'll take it. Now he'll be quite happy with that because he's got the chance to shoot another 11. 